Hello, I'm Jared Smith, and it's a pleasure to record these poems for Armagan Poetry Online. I will begin with a poem from my collection, The Sundays of Eternity, a book that was just about launched into the world before the world as we knew it was taken from us. Because one of our losses in the current so-called new normal has been the experience and thrill of live performance, theatre, music and other art forms, I hope this poem is a reminder of what we're missing. Playhouse for Daniel Reardon. One. The actor dressed as someone else will make us laugh. He can also break our hearts. He must strike a beat from lines in the script, never let down his mask. Sometimes he improvises or takes a chance like the tightrope walker in the circus act. He is good at playing both patriarch and son and making the switch from tragedian to master of fun. He is forever changing his name, adding and subtracting years to how he looks. The words he speaks are not plucked from some golden bough, but come from streets and alleys, bar rooms and factories, both sides of the table of family arguments. Two, her fake wounds have disappeared. She swaps the robes of ancient Greece for a pair of fashionable jeans. Backstage, Antigone is like everyone else, fixes her hair, glosses her lips, dismisses the psychobabble of the theatre critics. She checks her loose change for the bus, remembers what she forgot to put on her supermarket shopping list. Earlier, on a stage rinsed in blood, bad things happened in a chain of events with no deliverance. There was no pardon for what she did, the transgression she committed, the act of sisterly love. This new poem, written during the first lockdown earlier in the year, relates to the experiences, moods and anxieties of those days. Again, that new order in our daily lives and experience about which the newspaper headlines and news bulletins relentlessly reminded us. Rising Tide. The buses are empty, but still on their way to Stocking Lane and Limekillen Avenue, or back to city centre, then on to the airport north of there. There is time to count old mistakes, learn the tricks of solitaire. And on days the mercury rises, we step outside to see the way the garden heals itself with lavender and yellow broom. The back room gets the last of the evening sun, so we sit there and become sun worshippers. Or we switch on the TV but don't know what we're looking for the triviality of a soap opera, the chat show host who can coax a secret or a story. We watch the news, but mute the sound when that loud mouth from La La Land comes on with all his make-belief propagating falsehoods. Perhaps, like the birds, we should read the sky and not the headlines that hit us like a clenched fist or drown us in their rising tide of black ink. Tucked beneath those headlines of pandemic and turmoil across the Atlantic was another unwelcome news item, a local one this time, informing us that the gaunt house by the Liffey, the setting for Joyce's masterpiece, The Dead, was destined to become yet another tourist facility rather than being protected and preserved in a way that would suitably honour its Joycean connection. This poem, House on Usher's Island, was written uh, after again watching the wonderful 
transfer of text to screen by John Houston. House on Usher's Island. After Houston's version of the dead, for Seamus and Mary. This is no mythical house, but bricks and mortar, built to last, steps to a door that opened once to let the river gods hear laughter, a waltz, the fuss of hospitality, the shuffle from stair to stair. Those who were here before are here again, not as dinner guests, not to drink the wine, but as revenants in from the snowy weather, wearing the kind of clothes the last Edwardians wore. Now and forever they are up there, gathered where they can see as far as the housetops of Stony Batter, sequestered in a place of memory, of song and dance and doleful aria, they walk the floors, keep the table talk going with their badinage of argument and revelry. Nunca dio de luz un día, luz inhalaba ropa, as mans se irá baña tal, con pelo che irá vaya loita, ducias de cravos silvestres colgaban las suas macetas. Lucinha botava roupa como quem se raiva. Caía migalhas do quarto, folerpas de pan de onte e a aurora bordava cantando pasharos nas cortinas. Todas as canções da radio, aprenderas de rapaza, bailando com a sua sombra nas casas nas que servia. Num patio de luz un día, cravos, pan e rosas. Num patio de luz un día, cravos, pan e rosas. A lo lado se lleven, abrí las puertas ayer. Con tonos que no otra vida ela recorrer as alas de xente desconhecida. Abrindo lle todas as fiestas, deixando lle un ramo de hortensias como nas casas da aldea. Deixando lle un ramo de hortensias. Ai, quen bateu unha fiesta, do cuarto cae unha prenda, como a pluma dunha peja na terraza de carniña que apretou contra o seu peito, deixou lle atrás da porta, Cunha rosa xe un desexo que arrancou da súa horta Nun patio de luz un día, cravos, pan e rosas Nun patio de luz un día, cravos, pan e rosas Nun patio de luz, cravos, pan e rosas Nun patio de luz un día, cravos, pan e rosas Hello, this is Mary O'Donnell here and of course like all the other participants in the Amergan Solstice Festival. Um, I too was very disappointed at the, the cancellation this year because of COVID. But um, I guess onwards we go, even though we're stuck in the middle of lockdown until the beginning of December. And I guess all we can do is just um, keep going and uh, keep writing, keep reading keep engaging with the arts as best we can. Surprisingly enough, I've found I've been busy enough because um, with some ca having cancellations, I have had time to write and place things elsewhere. So that has been good. Uh, but nonetheless, 
you know, we are in a kind of a, a, a weird, almost warlike situation. And so with that in mind, I'm going to just read uh, two poems, which I hope you might enjoy. I would have read them at the festival. The first one is, um, it's a kind of an optimistic one. It's called The Future Wears a Yellow Hat. And it reflects my own ideas about the the indivisibility of time, really. I, I just think the future is here. We just have to live our way into it. And it is potentially quite happy. The future wears a yellow hat. The past, an underground chamber. We visit habitually, drunk from the river of forgetfulness. Brows perplexed as we struggle with bodies, ailing, misaligned that let us down. That easy touch, that musk, a morning sigh and shared cafetiere escape our senses. We erase the future too, storied with our lives, ignorant of dead loves waving hands and hats to catch our attention. If we remember the future quickly, like skinning a rabbit, exposing the bone, we will never look back. It greets us effortlessly, waving its yellow hat as we cross a high bridge from opposite directions, smiling. Now, the other poem I'd like to read is called um, My Mother Remembers Her Irish. Uh, my mother is 93 now and I think her her memory has been recalibrated in old age and this is my my response to her response to her childhood and all the things that she's trawling up now, including a knowledge of Irish that I never realised she had until recently. My mother remembers her Irish. Like Alice, she has fallen down the rabbit hole in a room at the bottom Rejecting a bottle labelled Drink Me, she reaches for the cracked urn of language. Speak Me, it invites. White hair in disarray, she unstops it. The contents fizz up and over the lip of glaze as she recovers the sounds she forgot after schooling. Now she has broken away from the language bunker. It's torqued English, takes to speech at the midnight hour. As if fighting the Jabberwocky, she uses old songs to push against a paralysis of chair lifts, walking frames. They emerge on her tongue, ancient oratorio. Shilta, be enoch amorach, kadurchtu akalin olin, bewaitlam dolawalya. Such softness that rarely found its way in English now honeys her tongue in the magical flight of dotage. Time, released, enriches conversation. Did you know that this republic was born 70 years ago today? Years after the Moloccos in the town taught me Mussolini's anthem. We speak of Easter music, the St. Matthew Passion, her Kjoel Kreufach. She wonders if the sun will dance Easter Sunday morning on the hill above her house at Kilna Drain, where she wants to return sometime soon. Mohinton Fein, she adds. Thank you very much and let's look forward to next year's Amergen Solstice Festival. <laughs>